Okay, so in the last video, we had some very, very basic React routing going on. And we talked a little bit about how React Router functions as sort of a gatekeeper. Basically, a route component is sort of like a do not enter unless you meet this criteria sort of thing involving the path. Now in this video, I want to show you first and foremost the switch component, which is basically going to prevent this from happening, where right now we're seeing both our test and our image, okay? Because obviously in routing, you might not want that. So let's go ahead and talk about this first. What we want to do is we want to import the switch. So switch. And this is expected to work like a switch statement in JavaScript. If you don't know, a switch statement takes an argument and outputs one thing based on a particular check. It's like a giant if else statement. So if we come down here and we wrap our route inside of a switch statement, like switch, like this, well, some things are going to be giving us errors. First and foremost, we can move this over and, well, now we need to go ahead and show this based on another route, of which we only want to show our movie list on the home page. So to do that, we want to move our movie list into a component of its own, further segmenting out our application into components. So I'm going to right click on my source folder and create a new file, which is movieslist.js. Now you could write this component from scratch, but I like copying and pasting. So I'm going to select everything literally everything right now from app.js and paste it in here. I'm going to go one by one and delete or change things I don't need. I'm going to change this export default to movies list. Okay. And I'm going to remove this router. I'm going to remove all of these switch stuff. And this component is going to get really small. Now we're going to want to wrap this in some sort of a div tag because right now this is going to error out if we're just trying to have a straight up curly bracket in here. Okay. So you'll see here our render statement looks like a return with a div wrapping around what we had for our movies. We're going to leave all of this component did mount stuff because this is where we want to fetch our movies. And we're going to change the app, the name of the class to movies list. And we're going to leave the import in here. We're going to remove this import of app.css. We're going to remove the logo. And we're going to remove the React router stuff. So we simply just have our React component and our movie are the only things we're importing. We have our movies list component now with the state, it's grabbing data, and it's simply outputting a list of individual movies. This is what your component should look like. Now let's head back to app where we can then remove a whole bunch of stuff. For instance, we no longer need this component did mount stuff and we no longer need the state. And we can come in here and we can create a new route. Let's remove this even. Notice how we're getting a bunch of red. And okay, let's head up top here to our imports where we can see that we can remove our import movie. However, we can just modify this import movie to say import movies list, okay, from movies list.js or just movies list. And this is going to be the component that we'll use now. Okay, so uh, you'll notice again, we have a bunch of underlining red stuff. And if you remember from a couple of videos back, well, we're not doing a whole lot with this component. So this can become a functional stateless component. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to try to convert this to a functional stateless component before I do. So go ahead and try that now or pause the video. If you've successfully completed and you, our application is working correctly still, then you should be getting no errors on anything. Let's go ahead and do this together. I'm going to say const instead of class. Const app is going to be equal to a function. We're not using any props in here, so we can remove everything the, from the return backwards, the render stuff, and have simply parentheses. You can see this just got a whole lot simpler. So our constant function app is simply just outputting router, a div, header, and our route, just like that. So if we were to come to our app right now, 
You should see that things are just working fine at test, and if we're at the home page, it's going to show nothing. Uh, what's happening here is that it's looking, it's hitting the switch statement, it's saying, hey, does route.path.test show anything? Well, uh, uh, no, we're not at path.test. Okay, that's fine, and then it just doesn't output anything else. But we actually wanted our movies list to be output here on the home page. So let's check this out. I'm going to first do this with a gotcha in here, and then I'm going to fix it. We're going to say path forward slash should be outputting movies list. Okay, so the component that we're using is now movies list. And if we come to our page, you can see our movies are here. Awesome. But if you remember, when we're on test, we should only want to see test show up. And if we come to test, the movies show up. And you might be very confused. We just built this switch statement that acts as a gatekeeper. And they're saying, hey, is the path forward slash? And it's like, no, man, the path is test. Okay, I'll put test. What's going on here? Well, React Router is inclusive with this path checking. It's basically looking at this path and saying, hey, does this path exist? Like, does forward slash, just forward slash exist here in this path? And coming here, well, yeah, it accepts and says, hey, forward slash is there. It's not even looking for test. It's just saying, does is forward slash exist there? It does. So then it accepts it. And this can be really useful if you have deeply nested routes. You may be like on level up tutorials, I have a whole separate section of the site called tutorials layout. And then I, I all I have to say is tutorials here, right in the path, and it, therefore any single path that's forward slash tutorials, and then whatever afterwards, will then move along to the tutorials page layout, where I can then have another switch statement for their routing. So in typical routing systems, you have all your routes in one place. But in React Router, you split up your routes where you need them. This allows for much better code reuse and allows your routes to function as components themselves. It's a weird thing that it takes a little bit to get used to if you've used a lot of other routing solutions, but I guarantee you, you're going to love it. So how do we fix this issue? Well, here's a way. We just move test below it. Test below it now causes the app to check for test and says, hey, does test exist? Sure. Uh, let's show test. And then if we were to go to the other page, does test exist? No. Does forward slash exist? Yes. Here to show that. But I'm not happy with that solution because that requires this order of operations to matter. Let's move this back up here. Uh, so one way we can fix this is by simply just saying, hey, this path needs to be the exact path. And by simply having a prop in here of exact, uh, this is going to say that it needs to be exact path, no uh, nothing else. Now, this is something we actually haven't seen before syntax, where we're just throwing in a word in here as a prop. This is the equivalent to the exact equal to true. In fact, if we save this right now, ESLint is going to fix this. So right now, this is saying, is exact path equal to true? Okay. We save this, ESLint just refactors it to exact. Why? Save space. That's it. Okay, so we're here, and now our test route says test. Our home route has our movies, and everything is good in this world because this switch works. Okay, so we have our switch component, we have our route, we've moved our movies list into its own thing. Now let's talk about another component, which is the link. For instance, we went to our switch page and we couldn't get back. And likewise, well, we wanted to be able to link our images to the test page. So let's go ahead and first thing we want to do is you may have guessed that we need to import a link from browser or React Router DOM. And a link is basically just an anchor tag uh, with some differences. And personally, these are kind of annoying differences, but um, you they're not they're not like game changing or something like that. It's not going to ruin your life. So we have a link tag in place of an anchor tag. And instead of an href for a hyperlink reference, we're going to have a to property. This allows everything to keep into React land and allows React to understand the, uh, the routing and the path and everything like that. If you were to have an anchor link tag here, it's going to work, but it's going to cause a page refresh 
when you change pages all the time. So that way when you change pages, you're gonna have some uh, bad experience. This allows you to change pages, change routes without having a page refresh. So you'll see here, and the underline on this link right here is actually, a, I believe, a bug. It's going to tell us that it needs an href. You don't want an href in here, so just ignore that for now. I know it's tough to ignore these red underlines, but you can always turn that rule off too. Uh, what we have here is a, a link that's going to link to the home page, just forward slash, wrapping around our logo. Okay, so now when we come to our page and we can click on this, it's going to take us there. If we head to our test page, so test, click on our logo, you can see no refresh jumps us back here, nice and smooth. Now, likewise, we want us to click on one of these images and have it take us to our test page. So we're going to, I'm going to copy this import statement because I don't like typing things out each time. And in movie, uh, movie.js, we're going to import simply link. We can do this on a one liner because it's just one thing. Okay, import link from React Router DOM is the key, and we're going to wrap our image inside of a link. We're going to just say link, and you may have guessed that we're going to link this to forward slash test like this. And once again, our, our ESLint is going to complain about something that it shouldn't be complaining about. And go ahead and close this tag off. Okay, so this is nice. We're now going to link to test and be able to go back and forth. So here we are, click on an image, test, click on the header, back, test, back, works with any of them, test, back. Super cool, right? Nice and easy. And this is almost where we want to leave things off at the end of this video, but I want to show you something called params. We can use parameters in our route to route to something dynamically. For instance, I'm going to change this link to uh, from being a forward slash to being curly brackets, I'm going to have back ticks, and I'm going to have a forward slash. Uh, this back ticks, you remember, is string interpolation, it allows us to use variables inside of a string. We can say dollar sign curly brackets like this, and now access the movie.id. So we're going to be linking to a movie.id. The reason why this is cool is that now, programmatically, if you look at your path um, or if you look at the DOM, each one of these links is going to link to a different unique ID. So if we select this one, it's obviously going to remove our movies because we don't have a path that's 335984, but uh, we do have these totally unique dynamic paths. What's great about all this is, I mean, we don't have to repeat any of this code here. It's grabbing all this stuff and doing all this stuff dynamically for us. Uh, definitely one of the nice things about working in a JavaScript framework like this. So check it out. We're just simply using the movie.id as the path. Let's go ahead and change our route. What we want to do instead of dot or forward slash test, we want to use a colon and then ID. The reason we're using the colon is that lets React Router know that we're going to be using a parameter, something that we can access later. And inside of our test component, uh, I'm going to spare you the details on this right now. In the next video, we're going to cover this a little bit more, but I'm going to have curly brackets match. Match is where the params are stored within Re React Router. So if we save this, we have access to match. And inside of match is dot params and then the param title. So we have match dot param. I think it's param, params with an S, dot, and then the name of our param. If we were to call this up top instead of ID, panda, this would be panda, right? So match.params dot ID. So in one fell swoop here, we are now going to be outputting something dynamic. When we come to our new page, you can see it outputs the ID directly onto the page because we're outputting that. So really super cool here. Uh, we're using this param dynamically to pass into our route. And you can throw these params on here and have as many as you'd like. You could have forward slash uh, panda now and then have access to another one if you wanted to have additional params. And it passes that data just along to this new function or this new component. 
And in the next video, we're actually going to be doing something more important with that data. Right now, we're simply just outputting an ID, and that's super lame. I mean, that has absolutely no use for us, but we're able to get access to that through match.params. Dot our parameter name. So check it out in the next video. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be hitting our API once more. We're going to be saying, hey, movie DB, give me one single movie and give me all of the information about that particular movie. And then we're going to be able to have a really dynamic system where based on the route and based on the movie we click on, we actually get a whole bunch of information. Now, what's great about this is, again, this thing is going to be totally dynamic and flexible. If your movie list grows or you suddenly have a new list of movies, all you need is that ID in the path and the particular movie you're looking for is going to fetch all of that information correctly from the API for you. It's going to be really super smooth, so check it out. Uh, right now, this test component still here will be going away in favor of a fancier component that hits the API once more. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Hit me up on email, or you can head to the Level Up Tutorials Slack room and ask questions away there. But right now, we have some really good routing going. We're using params. We're using a switch statement. And we talked a lot about how React Router works. And then from there, we're going to add some really good styling to this thing, make it look nice and fancy. We're going to bring in additional components from NPM to extend the use of React. I mean, who wants to write all of their own components all of the time? And we're going to get into some cool animation stuff. I'm going to blow your mind with some simple animation stuff that's just going to look really, really super great. And then we're going to get into, well, pure components, uh, some additional skills, and then where to go from here. So thank Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.